Hi, this is attorney Roy Oppenheim. I'm here today uh, to talk about uh, the aftermath of Hurricane Irma as well as Hur Hurricane Harvey. Uh, we're standing right now in the, in the back of my office building where there's some light debris and uh, there are a lot of things I, I want to say here and I'm not sure if they're in any, any particular order. First of all, I want to make sure you know that uh, my, my dog Winslow has been with me the whole time and he actually has found the whole uh, experience rather uh, interesting to say, to say the least. Number one, the, probably the most important thing is that when these kinds of national crises occur or major regional crises occur, uh, it brings the country together. And we've seen a major outpouring of, of, of people really trying to help one another. And uh, for me, that's always reassuring uh, about humanity and man, and, and man itself. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is about three years ago, I, I, I made a video which will attach to this uh, for, for public television and local affiliate, where we talked about uh, this kind of event possibly occurring sometime in the future. Uh, and when I say this kind of event, we're talking about uh, something where, which was climatically in, in engaging uh, so many human beings at one time. And we had a lot of first first time events that, that have occurred really in the history of this in, of this country. Number one, uh, we had two hurricane uh, uh, two hurricanes that were either uh, level four or level five hit the United States mainland uh, in, in one year. Second time we had the second thing is we've had one of the largest, if not the largest, evacuation uh, in the history of the United States where where as many as uh, five or six million people literally left the state of Florida over a period of about a hundred hours. And the third thing is we've never had four or five million people uh, in the state of Florida uh, lose, lose electricity all at one time. I mean, we've had blackouts in the city of New York, but those are usually uh, caused by one particular type of event. Here you have hundreds if not thousands of electric lines that have been snapped where the, where the poles, where the electric poles, end up being treated like, like toothpicks and just breaking and, and, and trees and shrubs coming down on the lines and, and having to have uh, electrical workers from all over the country uh, come in for days and weeks to, to, to repair this, this kind of a, a crisis. In fact, in our particular home, which doesn't have power, uh, the folks that are fixing it in the area uh, came down from Michigan and, and, and I spoke to them extensively. But So, th so that's, that's number one and number two. Uh, but number three is, uh, what impact is this going to have on, on the real estate market? Um, in, in, in the weeks and months and years to come. And number one, I think short term, we're going to see that people who lost their homes and need homes obviously are going to have some insurance money and there is going to be some stimulation, uh, particularly uh, in, in the market that, that's not the luxury market, which I define maybe uh, uh, somewhere above six or $700,000. So I think anything below that, we're going to see a lot of activity. And, and that part of the market has been pretty robust over the past uh, several months, if not the past year. The luxury market, I think, is not going to do particularly well here. Uh, I think it hasn't been doing particularly well for, for quite some time, and it's going to particularly not do that well. And I think particularly properties uh, that are on the waterfront that uh, are, could be affected by high winds and affected by floods, I, I think those areas people are going to have second thoughts about. We're going to have what, what I used to call the CNN effect, where so many people are watching these, these events for hours on end on, on television, particularly on CNN, uh, looking at the aftermath of Harvey and the aftermath of Irma, that it's going to affect the, the, the national psyche to, to some extent. And so I'm a little concerned that, that high-end real estate is going to, to be uh, affected by this, particularly in, in, in Florida. And I previously said that we had to look particularly uh, at Key West or the Florida Keys as a harbinger or, uh, of, of what is to come in the future or maybe like a canary in the mine. And I think to some extent the Middle Keys is an indication of that. And here you had you know, a major, major tropical storm. Some people are saying calling it a, a, a level five may not even be sufficient. Certainly in the islands, they're saying that we basically had level six storms. And in fact, there is no level six. But the kind of massive destruction that we've seen is, is not necessarily a 100-year event, is not necessarily an anomaly. But in fact, these kinds of events are going to occur more and more often as our ocean waters continue to heat up. And in fact, our ocean waters have been heating up and they create so much more energy and power for these storms to really create such such uh, upheaval in, in, in our society. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, what the government is, is doing. Number one, if you have student loans, uh, most people will be able to get a deferment of 90 days. In fact, the student loan companies already are calling uh, people in Dade and Broward and other counties that, that, and, and Palm Beach County and, as well as the other counties that have been affected uh, and on the West Coast uh, to let people know that their student loans are going to be deferred for 30 days. Uh, many mortgage companies will have the same policies. They probably will not call because banks don't do that typically. So what you're going to have to do is call your mortgage company and see if, in fact, you're, you're eligible for a, a, a 30, 60, 90-day deferment on your mortgage payment. I know if you're a, uh, 
a, a, a small business owner like we are, there will be opportunities to uh, be able to defer certain tax returns and tax payments uh, while we all get back on, on our footing. Uh, in terms of what the, these kind of storms do to the economy, I mean, historically people used to always pray for hurricanes, which I would never do, because it does dump ultimately more money into the economy, especially if you're a roofer, uh, a, uh, someone involved in, in landscaping or, 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 or construction work or contracting work, this will create more work for you. Obviously, if you're in the restaurant business, initially you lost a ton of business, but now you're going to be getting a lot of business where a lot of the supermarkets are still closed, and in fact, people have to, have to you know, eat out. But it isn't going to be the luxury or high-end or fine dining that's going to do particularly well. It's going to be the pizzerias. It's going to be the, 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 fat, the, the chicken places that, that, that can throw a good meal uh, out on your table for a family very, very quickly. Uh, I think the fine dining restaurants are probably going to take a hit because right now I think everyone's just trying to, to get their lives back, back in order and are not particularly necessarily interested in, in, in having a, an expensive meal. Um, there are a few other points we want to talk about here, and one is about the building codes. I think that, that we're going to see even more uh, intensive uh, increase in, in building codes. I think folks who build along, along uh, flood zones, uh, particularly along waterways and, 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 and the ocean, probably going to have to have their homes elevated so when, when the waters come through, uh, they won't constantly uh, have, have a flood situation. Um, I think we're going to see a ton of beach erosion, which we've seen, and, and we're going to have to see how we're going to maintain these beaches in the future. Uh, but I think what we're going to have to do is start collectively thinking about how we as a society can start to adopt to uh, a new reality. Uh, and our new reality is almost like a Venice. I mean, Venice has existed for, for hundreds and hundreds of years, and people have accepted that the notion of flooding, but they live through it. It becomes a part of their, their normal existence. I don't think we've inculcated that into our norms here yet uh, in, in, in South Florida. And, and if we're going to be able to be uh, a vibrant community where, where tourists are going to come and people are going to have their second home, we're going to have to make sure that we adapt ourselves to, to the new reality of, of where we are. Um, other points I wanted to go over uh, is that... Um, I'm hopeful that uh, we will all learn from this and that this will uh, be a, a wake-up call uh, to, to ourselves and our society that you know we can certainly overcome this. We, we don't have to abandon South Florida, but more importantly, we, we need to embrace what's going on and do whatever we have to do to fortify our, our, our community. A uh, hundred years from now, it's possible that there will be portions of, of our community that we will not be able to, 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 to really save. Uh, because of uh, the rising tides of, of the ocean. But this isn't about rising tides. This is about uh, Mother Nature and, and, and having just very, very strong, uh, powerful forces uh, upon us that, that we have to be able to adapt. So uh, the types of landscaping that we choose is going gonna, is gonna to be affected. Our construction is going to be affected. And, and, and how we interact as a society is going to be affected. So to all of you who, uh, who have been affected by the storm, I, I wish you all the very best. You need to be strong, you need to be positive, and you need to know that, that we're all going to work together. Uh, and if you need our help in any particular way, our, our law firm, Oppenheim Law, and our title company, Western Title, is here to serve you. God bless all of you, and thank you for uh, letting me speak to you today.